Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the 2018 Doctor Who DVD, Blu-ray, and Target Books Collection Overview. Alrighty, so last time we wrapped up our look at the massive freaking Doctor Who collection that takes up pretty much this entire bookshelf unit. There's one more thing that shares the space with the Doctor Who collection, and that is all of the other British sci-fi that I've got. Now, some of you longtime viewers will have seen, I've done videos about a lot of these before, but I've never really done sort of a, a compact overview of all of them together, and that's what this is. So, you just want to sort of a quick look at what other stuff I've got in my British sci-fi collection. Um, this is the video you want. Alrighty, so let's get to it. Other British sci-fi on Blu-ray and DVD, today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Okay, so as you can see, I do enjoy me some British sci-fi. So, starting off here, I just did a closer look at this uh, set recently, so I won't uh, spend too much time on it, but I've got uh, the old A&E release of The Tomorrow People, and I don't think it's actually got a re-release since, so this is it. So, uh, very nice. This was released over the course of three sets. Classic 70s sci-fi. Um, definitely some inspiration from Alfred Bester there in some of the uh, concepts. Uh, but this is great stuff. I mean, if, if you like 70s Doctor Who, you'll probably really enjoy this because it's actually structured almost exactly the same way in that it's a series of serialized stories and they're all kind of interconnected and tell an overall story over the course of the series. So it ran for eight seasons. But uh, some of the seasons are really short. I mean, there's actually only about 70-some-odd episodes. But um, really good stuff, and uh, I definitely recommend it. And music by Dudley Simp Simpson, who actually did a lot of music throughout uh, the 70s era of Doctor Who. Uh, and here we go. This is uh, kind of one of my comfort food shows. Whenever I'm feeling kind of down or like things aren't going so well, I like to... Uh, fire these up here and spend some time with the boys from the dwarf you know just kind of hang out in deep space get away from all your troubles these dvd sets are freaking amazing i mean not only are all the episodes complete and uncut and it is the original broadcast versions of series one through four it's not the remastered versions that everybody hated uh it would have been nice to have those included as a bonus but um but yeah but anyway i mean if if i have a choice between the two i'll take the original broadcast versions every time so much like Doctor Who, like the Doctor Who sets, these sets are absolutely loaded with extras. You have so many deleted scenes and outtakes on here, it's basically like getting another episode or two. It's uh, crazy how much stuff. There's always documentaries about the making of that particular season, interviews with cast and crew, commentaries on pretty much every single episode, sometimes multiple commentaries. Um, just, it goes on and on and on. And the menus themselves are really fun, too. It's just kind of different rooms, um within Red Dwarf are depicted there, uh, relevant to the particular season. But uh, great stuff. Um, I absolutely love this show. Uh, I was really uh, stoked that they brought it back recently for a couple new seasons. And, um, yeah, great stuff. Now, I should mention, I know some of you are going to ask, simply because I'm mentioning Red Dwarf, um, there is a Blu-ray set coming out of the first eight series, and it's getting much the same treatment that uh, classic Doctor Who has been getting. Now, some people have been wondering, well, the whole thing was shot on video. How good is that going to look? Well, you know, there's there are upscaling techniques nowadays that can actually make standard definition stuff look pretty darn good when upscaled to high def. I mean, obviously, it's still not going to look as good as native high def, but it will look better than, you know, regular SD. So, you know, just take a look at some of my Multimedia Chronicles retro episodes if you want an example of that, of how I've converted all the old video footage to true 60 frames per second. Um, you know, if they use a similar technique for these, there's no reason why they can't look really good. And here's Series 8. This is, this is a slightly longer series. And there we go. And that's where it ended for a very long time. And, of course, it ended on a killer cliffhanger until we got this. Many years later, we <laughs> got Red Dwarf Back to Earth. This is the director's cut. Contains, I believe, both the uh, um, broadcast and extended versions of the episodes. Very nice. This was a, a real treat for me because not only is it Red Dwarf, but it's also a huge parody of Blade Runner. So 
uh, double whammy for uh, for me personally, and I'm sure for a lot of you as well. And then we got Red Dwarf X, which uh, is great. This is the you know basically season ten, six new episodes. Um, I watched all these in one sitting, and and this one I really enjoyed a lot because to me it felt like good old Red Dwarf again. You know, this one tells a little bit more of an epic story, just kind of you know getting back in the swing of things. But this feels more like classic Red Dwarf to me, and uh, was was such a treat. And then it was quite a while before I got around to seeing the next two seasons. I don't know why I kept putting it off, but uh, picked up the Blu-rays of series eleven. And again, lots of extras. And not as many extras on these as there were on the old sets, but still, you know, a nice meaty, a nice meaty package. Snicker, snicker. Um, yeah, so this, for whatever reason, appears to be the only one that came with the slipcover. I don't know if the others had slipcovers at some point, and I just missed out on them. This one, uh, Series 12, I got like the day it was released. <laughs> and it had no slipcover, so I assume that, that that was it. So, yeah, so I don't know. Not too big of a loss because really, I mean, honestly, this is literally the one that has a slipcover out of the entire collection. So not too broken up about if I miss the slipcovers on those ones. Next up, uh, I discovered this show around the same time I discovered Red Dwarf, actually, when it was being uh, aired on YTV in Canada. Uh, we have The Tripods, uh, which I've also done videos about. Um, I've actually done videos about pretty much all of these at some point. But um, great stuff. Love this show, uh, based on a trilogy of young adult novels. Um, basically about aliens invading and enslaving Earth and a group of young uh, men and women trying to uh, free humanity. It's just really good. Uh, it was all serialized. It was supposed to be three series, basically one season per book, but uh, sadly it got cancelled after series two and ends on a crazily huge cliffhanger. But um, this is a really cool DVD set. It does give you all kinds of information about what would have happened in season three. So you you know, we get some kind of resolution there. I did a video about it a while back, so be sure to check that out. And then we have The Day of the Triffids. This is the 1981 BBC miniseries version, and this remains my all-time favorite uh, adaptation of this story. It's been adapted a number of times over the years. There was, of course, a 60s movie, which I have on VHS somewhere. Um, and there is also uh, this version. There is numerous radio play adaptations, and stuff like that, but this one remains my favorite. Is this uh, a single disc? And it comes with a booklet as well. It's quite nice, but um, really love this one a lot. If you've never seen it, I highly recommend checking it out. I mean, visually you might find it a little bit dated by today's standards, but it's actually still quite good. Like the the they, the Triffids are all done with practical effects and such, and I thought they looked really good. And then in 2009, we got a new version of the Day of the Triffids. Uh, honestly, this one was a bit of a mixed bag for me. They took some liberties with the story and kind of changed some things, and I didn't really care for some of the directions they went in it. There are aspects of it that are pretty good. I need to give it a rewatch, actually. I haven't really watched it since I originally got it. But, um, um, but yeah, as I recall, it, it didn't really wow me as much as the old one. But, uh, you know, it's still the same basic story. Just, uh, you know, some of the nuances are a little different. And then I've done videos about this as well. We have Survivors, the uh, complete original series. This was uh, originally created by Terry Nation, and then he left after the first season, sadly. And yes, the show did kind of suffer as a result. But uh, overall, really good stuff. Uh, basically, a bunch, bunch of people trying to survive the end of the world. Basically, the majority of the population gets wiped out by a biological virus of some kind possibly a weapon that was un unleashed accidentally or what have you. I don't think we ever really find out for sure. But uh, then there was a remake a few years back, which uh, was you know a little bit more contemporary, uh, taking a lot of the same ideas, uh, a lot of nods to the original series for fans of the original. Um, I, I still got to finish watching this, actually. I've only watched about half of it. But uh, honestly, I, I liked what I saw. I thought like it was a pretty good revival of it. But um, I still lean towards the original. I mean, the original, especially series one of the original, holy moly, that, that still stands today as absolute phenomenal drama. It's just a great, great show. And another 1981 BBC miniseries. That was just a great year for BBC miniseries. We have The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This is the original miniseries. Um, this is actually the original release in the slightly larger case. It's actually just a two-disc set. 
But um, the second disc has the making of, the hour-long making of documentary that they did like 10 years later, uh, which is really good and really interesting and really informative. It's, uh, it's, it's a great documentary. Um, I just rewatched this with, uh, with my friends recently, um, just for, uh, for Towel Day uh, this past year, uh, which basically Douglas Adams' birthday. Uh, designated as Towel Day, so I thought, hey, let's let's watch the Hitchhiker's Guide again. We haven't watched it for a while, so it's like, yeah, sure, we'll do that. And it was great. And then we here we have Quarter Mass and the Pit. Yeah, it's actually uh, misspelled there too. How about on the disc? Yeah, and on the disc it's misspelled. <laughs> it's not Quarter Mass. This is not a bootleg, by the way. This is actually a genuine release. It's just from like a budget label. What is it? Uh, Guillotine Films. <laughs> And they misspell it, like, all over the place. However, in the description, they spell it correctly as Quatermass, because it, it's Quatermass, it's not Quartermass. Anyway, this was the third uh, Hammer film adaptation of Quatermass. Now, Quatermass originally um, was three uh, BBC serials back in the 50s, uh, predates Doctor Who, and a lot of people consider it kind of almost uh, like an early Doctor Who-esque show. But um, it... Uh, yeah, I don't think I've actually seen the originals. Sadly, the 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 original first one uh, was not fully recorded. Like the, the whole idea of recording uh, shows was still kind of new at the time. So the BBC recorded the first two episodes, weren't happy with the quality, so they didn't record the remaining four. Uh, basically, the shows were performed live. Um, however, by the time they did the second and third miniseries, recording techniques had improved somewhat, and they do have those. So if you've ever wondered, like, oh, are they ever going to find the other four episodes? No, they won't, because they were actually never recorded. So anyway, there was a British set put out a while back that had restored versions of all the episodes of the original miniseries that, uh, that exist, and uh, also had the, um, I think it had the movies as well, or maybe not. The movies have got, like, a lot of different releases over the years, but uh, I got this. I mean, it's just a budget release, and it's fairly cheap. And it's actually a really, really great uh, movie. Genuinely scary and chilling. It really has a, a wonderful atmosphere to it. And then finally, not a British series. Kind of cheating a little bit here. But I lump it in with the British stuff because it really does have that feel to it. Like, this is, you know, low budget, uh, 70s sci-fi, lots of chroma key. Um, <laughs> I've done videos about this as well. Um, I love this series in all its cheesiness and, uh, you know, and, and all of its, uh, over ambition for what it, they were able to do with their budget. Um, yeah, so we have, of course, the, the Star Lost, but, um, so I just kind of put this in with the, uh, the 70, or the, the British sci-fi, because it's, you know, low budget 70 sci-fi that it, it's notable in that it was kind of produced in the same way that British shows were produced at the time, whereas all the studio stuff was shot on video and stuff, and they used uh, chroma key for a lot of the effects and models and whatnot. Um, and it's really one of the few shows from that era that was done that way. Like, most shows in the 70s and 80s were shot on film, you know? Um, but this one wasn't. This was done, like, BBC style. So, for that reason, I kind of lump it in with the British stuff. And, uh, and there you go. So, a good selection of British sci-fi and one British-esque sci-fi. And there you go. Yeah, I do love me some British sci-fi, as I'm sure you can tell. I know there's still a few things that are, are glaringly omitted, such as Blake 7. I really want to get Blake 7. Uh, the reason I don't have it is because for years I was kind of holding out for a Region 1 release. Doesn't look like that's ever going to happen, so... At some point in the foreseeable future, I'm just going to import the Region 2 sets and call it a day. Um, I have seen Blake 7. I love it. Uh, it was a great show. Uh, they were showing it two episodes a week on PBS many, many moons ago back in the early 90s. And uh, I watched every single one of them. And I just absolutely loved it. Showed it to my friends. They loved it. Um, and it was great. But uh, And there's a lot of other uh, shows, like a lot of other miniseries and things like that, like Children of the Stones. Uh, there's one called Sky that uh, I'd really like to check out. Um, what else? I can't remember. There's so many. They've been just doing sci-fi for forever. Oh, uh, Doomwatch. Doomwatch is another big one. Yeah, I've seen a few episodes of that. That's a really good one. I'd love to get a, a nice set of. Um, it's another one that's sadly missing a lot of episodes, so... You know, I'll take what I can get. Um, oh, and all the Quatermass. Of course, I got the movie Quatermass and the Pit. It's like the crummiest edition ever. But 
Uh, there's, of course, the, the original BBC miniseries versions, and then there's the other Hammer film versions, a lot of which have actually got Blu-ray releases in recent years. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. I do love me some British sci-fi. Alrighty, that is it from me to you for now. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time in whatever form that takes. Until then, thanks for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, and sayonara. Alrighty, so last time we wrapped up our look at the massive Doctor Who collection. There's one more thing that, you know, takes up some of the space on this shelf. And it's a... Hey! Today on the Multimedia Chronicles.